Hey right, guys, so next up on the Tag 2 overview, we'll go over Ogre. Now Ogre, I don't think he has a good chance of returning second seven, but we'll just go over him anyway. So what Ogre was kind of known for was his, was his range, because his jab range is really, really strong. So his, his biggest strength is definitely his range and his grabs. Because of his snake arm, he actually can't see his grabs very clearly. So it's actually very difficult to break Ogre's grabs, and he got really good Oki off, off them as well. So he had the generics, the generics were decent, and again, you can't really see them well because of the snake arm. And he had Waning Moon, which was uh, a combo launcher, like a... Uh, what do you call them? Do -do 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 -do, like, a gra like a troll launcher, like like Laws or Bobs, so yeah, really good one. And he could buffer as well, he could buffer as well from a bunch of things. So it was good, like Deathwork 1 into this, Deathwork 1, 1 into this. So he had, he had really good range, a really good grab game, and he had a bunch of stuff like um, Back 2. It was a 14 frame counter at launcher, so it was, it was quite good. Now this team, Ogre and Julia, were very, very bullshit to care because of this wall combo. 40 damage on scale wall ender. So Julia lets Ogre do this very easily. So yeah, Back 2 was a 14 frame high counter at launcher. You know, the, you can see the range is actually quite good with the range, you know, you can come from so far. You can just spike immediately with that back one if you're unsure. Another one was Damper 2. It was 15 frame. It had a string to it. And the first hit is safe. The first hit is safe. And it had a hit confirmable string on counter hit that you could follow up. And it gave a knockdown wall spot, you know, if you're close enough. So Damper 2 by itself, which was a decent poke. And you could finish it to stop him from challenging. And you could even finish it even further as well with the follow up. Natural encounter hit only. Now, Dumpford 1 1, now that's the juicy mid poke. So, Dumpford 1 1, it lets you encroach and it was plus 5 on hit. So, Ogre could do Dumpford 1 on its own and then bully you with jabs or bully you with grabs or quick lows or whatever. So, his Dumpford 1 was extremely, extremely good because of the natural follow up. And you can do it again, you know, you can't press anything, you can do, you can do it again. And it's weak to sidestep left only. So if you're on player 2 side, you can't get away from the second Dumpford 1, because you can't sidestep away from the, the, the Dumpford 1, for example. So yeah, this Dumpford 1 was pretty good. Back 4 was another mid poke that you had. Now I'm just going through like, you know, key moves. I'm not going to go through every move, I'm just going to go through the key moves. So back 4, 3 was Bruce's back 4, 3 in tied 2. So back 4 by itself was a 14 frame mid poke, and it was plus 6 on hit, I believe. So it was decent for a poke match, you know, fast, quick mid poke. But I think it's better to do Dumpwork 1 in the same situations, but it's there for like unreversible mid poke anyway. Then back 1 was another mid poke that you could throw at. It was a bend, it was his main bend move. On a counter hit, you know, it gave you a free hit on the ground if you hit and counter hit. So, and if they try to move on the ground, you know, you could just hit them again. So it was really good for Oki, really good for poking, and just generally in combos as a bend move. Forward 4 was. A safe homing high. It was quite slow, but it was safe. It was only minus three, so he still could get, kind of do things. So four four into the Mark two was three was guaranteed. Another thing with Ogre was his four three was four, so he could go into fly, and he had the whole natural string out of fly with one two one. Now what you could do with this is you could do you could stop on the first hit or stop on two hits and then bully them with grabs, for example. This was this was very common Ogre flowchart. Two hits into Wayne and Moon or just finish it. Or whatever, you know, try and catch you ducking or whatever. So yeah, fly, fly stuff and block to approach from range was pretty legit. And then condition them with continue string or not to make them respect you. But for lows, he has like back three, which is Jay-Z's back three, like Chang back three. So of course, you know, it, can, it comes in counter hit, like Julius and Michelle's. And then back four was another quick poke. It was neutral and hit. It didn't crush, so it was kind of slow, and it didn't crush, but it was something he needs, you know, it's, it's a... He, has, he doesn't have much going for him in terms of low pokes, so then back 4 is something you have to you kind of have to use, or back 3 for high crushing under, although this is reactable, so it's good for crushing and the counter combo. So, and 4 for 2 was safe, and you know, look, the damage was decent. It was kind of slow, but it was safe, and the damage was decent. And of course he has Mishima 4 for 3. So he has this and you can combo off it. And it was maybe something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it was something anyway. So Mishma 4 for 3, he has this. So it was good to just kind of throw edge. You know, catch them ducking. 
And uh, another unique thing about Ogre is, you know, okay, he has demon, he has demon scissors from Mishima as well. But on his wake up, he can do fly, so you can. It's really hard to get Oki on Ogre because of his fly stance, because of his fly from wake ups, and during combos, he can actually um, fly away from combos. So let me demonstrate. It was like a combo breaker, but you had to read it. If you read it, you could reset the juggle to get bigger combos, you know. But you could escape some some character staples. So let me see, maybe Jin's something, 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 like Kan Kan's. So I, maybe Ogre can escape this. Mm, okay, don't tank out the Ogre. But yeah, basically Ogre could, um, he could uh, escape combos with his uh, fly. He could do a mid combo. So it was really, really strong. I don't know why I'm talking there. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So, that was me flying away there. Okay, see, I'm, I'm, I made a mistake there. So, Jim was actually able to catch me flying away because of his bad move. But it, uh, Ogre can actually escape some characters' combos with that fly move and then land safely. But it, you just have to make the read, you know, because if you, if you mess up the read, then you, you're going to get hit by a longer combo. So you just have to make the read, but you can escape some character staples. So it, it, it takes a good bit of knowledge. Uh, what else did he have? He had... Um, he had a uh, Epsi mix-up. He had an Epsi mix-up. So it was like Anna FC Dumper 2, except it didn't combo. It just gave a, a guarantee hit afterwards. So this into back one plus two, it was guaranteed. And he had like, of course, you know, while standing four to mix it up with, while standing two, like Kazia while standing two, if you're really feeling yourself. Or you could do um, while standing three, which I think was safe. Or while standing one, while standing one, two, like Jin while standing one, two. So, you know, he had Epsi low, he had a whole Epsi low going from. So he had dash, he had four one plus two. This is one of his best moves for sure. Because it's 15 frame, it tracks to his weak side, it carries from so far on counter hit. On counter hit, it does this animation, so it carries pretty far. And of course, with Julia and some characters, he gets a really dumb combo at the wall. So he's very high damage, I push, if he has the right partner. So, yeah, 4 from plus 2 it was definitely a miss that Ogres would use a lot. And, like I mentioned earlier, he has a very strong grab game just because of his range and because of the snake arm massing his limbs a little bit. So it's kind of hard to see 2 grab and uh, 1 plus 2 grab apart because of the snake arms. Uh, let's see, he had a really good wall game as well, so let's go to the wall. He had a really good wall game, so his it was good because he could do side set for FC low and then combo afterwards. Now this is why you kind of need a partner like Julia to get this big juicy combo at the wall. Because to land this combo, you need you need a high wall splat, do up four and then you're in a fly stance kind of thing, and then two, which is the unscaled for your damage grab. But you need like a, a partner that allows you to get a high wall splat. So Julia is actually perfect for that with her with this type of color. You can do it from certain ranges at the wall, you know, tag yourself feller near the wall with high wall splat and then you can go first. Then you carry onto the wall with this and then grab them. But this just made it so much easier. So he had, so obviously when you, to complement sidestep 4, you could do like sidestep 4 from plus 2 for a safe mid option. Or sidestep down for 1, you know, just keep the pressure on. Or sidestep 4 from plus 2 to keep the mid, to have a safe wall splat mid. So yeah, Ogre's wall game was pretty scary. It was pretty, pretty scary. So Ogre is a pretty unique character. Like I say, he has a combo breaker. He had really high damage with the right characters. He had a really good Tiger Soft Feller. He had one of the best two hit Tiger Soft Fellers in the game. Because it was this. It was... Epsi. It was half circle for two. Oh Oh my god, I'm so bad. It was this. So... Okay, um, my execution is not this bad. That was it, that's it there. Half circle for a 2, 1 plus 2. So it was 47 damage. It, it, it had like a good carry, a good splat. And it was a lot of damage for like a one, a 2 hit filler. So Ogre was really good with characters that had really good enders after 2 hit fillers. 
So, so to kind of summarize Ogre a little bit, he had really good range, really good grabs, really good wall game, and his punishment was good. I'm going to go over his punishment shortly. But what kind of brought him down was his bad movement. So it's obviously he's a big character, you know, his movement's going to be pretty shit. He was prone to like Ogre exclusive combos because he's a big body, you know, certain launchers are going to be combo starters on him. That wouldn't be the case otherwise on normal characters. His, his range on his legs and his lows are pretty bad. So yeah, for example, it's what signing for with whiff on some moves because of the stubby legs. And his crushing was just pretty bad for like high crushing and low crushing. So a thing by Ogre is, he, he's actually like a mixture of some characters. So he had, he had like Paul 3 2, he had Anna FC Dumper 2, he had Mishima 1 1 2 and 2 2. He had Mishima Demon Scissors. He had while signing 4 4 from Mishima, 4 4 3 from Mishima, Bob off work 1 plus 2, uh, Bears 1 plus 2, um, and they had, he also had Bear back turn grab. And the Waning Moon was actually Wines, so this is actually belonging to Wine. Uh, Bruce back 4 3, Julia back 3, Roger down for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4. Jack them back to and the charge version as well. And double gins off four. Asuka and June's back three. Although it wasn't as good, obviously, but he didn't have the back four three follow up to hit confirm, so he didn't have this. Horang's hunting hawk. So it was like bam, 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 bam. Horang's then four four. King's capital punishment. So this was good to approach with, of course, in January as well. And to punish tag, to punish that uh, raw tags from my range, he had Raven's Denmark 4 4. So this was like a, this launched on normal hit on crouching opponents. It was still unsafe, but you could continue it. So it was, it was similar to Raven's. He had um, Kunimitsu 4 for 1 plus 2, which is the high unblockable. So he had this as well. It was pretty quick actually. It could be useful in range, because it, it actually comes out very quickly, like Kunimitsu's. He had Jin to assign 1 2. He had Kazi I was signing to. I'm probably missing a few, but those were the ones I noticed going through his move list. So let's go over his punishment really quickly. So for punishment, he had 1 2 2 plus 4 10 frames, so it was pretty chunky. And of course, you know, it, re it usually reached because of his range. So it was quite good. He had 2 2 to be minus on hit, but it did a little bit more damage. For 13 frame, he had down for 1 1, 40 damage plus 5 in crouch. It's not bad at all. For 14 frame, he had this for a wall splat, for a wall splat punish. Normally it's better to do it down for 1-1, one, one, but if you're near a wall, you want to do this for 14 anyway. For 15 frame, he had 3-2, which was plus 7 and this much damage. He didn't have a 15 frame launcher. His 15 frame launcher was up back 3, but you can only get this um, up close, you know. The range was kind of poor, because remember I talked about his stubby legs. So up back 3 usually only works like really up close as a punisher. For 16 frame, he had um, this, but he also had Headbutt, which was a really good whip punisher in general. Like this, this would be your main whip punisher with Ogre, and for 16 frame as a block punisher, because as you can see at the wall, you get a ridiculous amount of damage. 126 damage off a whip punish near a wall, so it's pretty beefy. And um, at 20 frame, you got off four for um, a combo, so you could do, you could bend off this. So something like this. Okay, I need to dash in for that for me. And then use this to carry, and then bam, bam, bam. So, um, for crouching, you had Dick Jab for a plus six. Every character has this. Or you can do hold forward to go in standing. He had while signing 4 4 for 11 frame, like Mishima. He had while signing 1 2 for 13 frame, like Jin. And for 16 frame, he had while signing 2, like Kazia. And first, you can do this from crate as well, but you might as well just do one side and two always. Uh, for up four at 20 frame, like standing, same as standing. So we got this combo again. And then jab, jab, shoulder, or whatever it is, whatever the combo is. And I think that's it really for Ogre. I think I went over all the key stuff that he has. Uh, you know, like it's, he has good range, he has really good grabs, really good wall game, good punishment. Uh, Good FC game is very risky, but it, it, it is there. It is there. It is very risky. And yeah, like good range, of course, you know, like down to back one plus two, which this could be safe space out at range. 
And of course his jabs are amazing. But his lows are kind of shit. That's his kind of main drawback. Like, this would be like one of his main lows. Like, low pokes, I mean. Like, his, his mix up lows are pretty good. But his safety low pokes are pretty lacking. So, then back four, back three, you know, down four, whatever. He doesn't have a generic down four, as far as I know. So, he was pretty lacking. Yeah, then three plus four as well. But this was, oh, this was a stagger low. So, and his crushing was pretty bad. He didn't really have like a good low crush apart from something like this or up four, but they're all risky. Uh, but he, like I said, he had like a unique combo breaker. If he was being comboed, he can escape certain character staples. Uh, he can escape certain Oki and wake up because of his um, wake up fly to make some Oki situations really awkward. And um, his, he, he was a big body, so his movement kind of sucks. And he's also prone to big, big combo only, like big character combo starters only, yes. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. And that's it all for Ogre.